welcome back everyone to another episode of VVVVVV. So last time we left off, we were at Vini Vini Vici. I think it was this one. And to be completely honest with you guys, I don't actually know where that was. Oh, I done. I, d I have no idea where that is. Let's see. What looks like super freaking crazy. So, last time I played this game was like, I'd say a solid, solid two, three weeks ago. <laughs> I pre recorded a bunch of stuff, and now I don't actually remember where we left, where we were. I remember a little bit how oh you know what I know I, I, I sort of remember this part oh god went the wrong way <laughs> So the last time we left off, we were somewhere in Vini Vini Vici, and you'll be happy to know, I've done zero practice since then. Oh man, I'm actually really tired today. Last night I stayed up, this is gonna stupid reason, this is a very stupid reason for me to be tired. But um, I stayed up last night playing... Actually I didn't even play anything, I was listening to music. I got on a SoundCloud thing. Like, you know when you get really hyped about music? Oh, I saw it. You know, sometimes you just get really, like, hyped for music. Oh, I remember this. So some- well, at least I do. Sometimes I just get really hyped about music. I, um... I, um, god, freaking, um, but yeah, sometimes I get, like, super hyped about music, and I'm like, I wanna learn all the things. Well, guess we're not getting that checkpoint. But yeah, sometimes I get, like, super hyped about music, and right now I'm on a huge, um, like, how would you say, like a rap? Like, I'm super into, like, learning more about rap as a genre and as a community and just about everything. Because as, um, as just someone who really likes music and music theory and just the creation of music and then just, like, s extremely fascinated by everything having to do with, um, <laughs> we, I'm just getting frustrated with this game. <laughs> With myself, not the game. The game's running perfectly okay. Um, but yeah. Anyways, um, I get like super interested sometimes in the genre of music. And earlier or late last year, it was um the tango, because I know nothing about the tango. And so I got really interested in that, and I still am. I'm actually working on a on a small project by myself. It's been worked on before, I'm pretty sure. Oh god, that hurt my soul. Okay. Okay. Oh, I remember this. Sort of. I don't know why I did that. I don't know why I thought that would be a good idea. I don't know why I thought that would be a good idea. I know perfectly well that that's not a good idea. But yeah, sometimes I get really into like a genre of music. And I'm really so unbelievably fascinated by the um... Ow, god. I did it again. I get really fascinated by the community surrounding a music, really sometimes even more than the music itself, because I mean, I can hear the music. Oh god. I can imagine what 
these people have been through and what it means to them. Here we go. Let, let me look where I am in the map. All right, that's that's where I am. That's where I would like to be. Sometimes you wanna go where everybody knows your name. Did you guys ever watch that show? I did. I watched that show a lot when I was younger. It's Cheers. If you didn't know, I know my singing was incredible. <laughs> yeah, you know it's. Sometimes you wanna go where everybody knows your name. Boodle, boodle, boom. And they're always there to stay. Bottom, bottom, bottom. We wanna be where the people are. Something like that. I don't really remember. It's been years since I've watched that show. And, um. It's. Yeah, I used to watch the show all the time. Probably not. It's, it's just like cartoons in the humor it has, that it has like something that'll entertain everyone, but all the inside jokes that only adults will understand, it's one of those things. So I didn't really understand a lot of like the more crude of the jokes from the show, but you know, whatever. As we can see, I'm just as good if not worse than I was last time. I think I made it to the top, didn't I, last time? <laughs> I died where I couldn't even see myself. You know who I watched this? You know how I know how this existed? The Beanie Beanie, Beanie, Beanie Beanie Um, because I watched Michael from Achievement Hunter, um, and Rooster Teeth play this for Rage Quit. And that's how I know about it. And I sort of watched them. I, I do this with a lot of YouTube videos. I put them on, they're just like my TV. Sometimes I have the time to sit down and just look at, watch a video, or watch a movie or whatever, and be entertained visually by that. But usually I like, I play video, video games, like, I play a lot of Minecraft, I play a lot of Dota too, I play a lot of just games that don't require a back, like, I don't have to listen to the background to do well in the game. Like, there's some games like, Skyrim that I just want to be immersed in that world so I won't play any music in the background or like watch TV or anything and um there is or like I I don't know I bought Dragon Age it was on sale for I think it was the summer sale that I bought it I bought it for like five bucks the complete set but I had a little bit of trouble with the DLC so I got really frustrated and I never actually started playing it I don't- I think I got Origins? I'm not too sure, though. But, um, that's what I... Oh, god. But... Yeah, so I just have it on in the background, and I don't really watch them do the thing, because I find it more appealing to listen to them. Um, I just listen to their vo voice and their intonation and like, I gather a lot more information by that than anything else. Ooh. Oh. <laughs> Doing things the hard way. Can you imagine if this were like real life? If you were just like, well, I'm gonna fall and I'm not, I won't die of gravity. Because apparently none exists for just me in this universe. But if I hit this pointy thing, I will be impaled and die. Like, what is that? Like, <laughs> can you imagine a world where we can't jump? Like, to get through obstacles, we have to set up some sort of platform above us. Some floating platform that we can jump, like, flip ourselves over with. Like, that's insane. That would be incredibly inefficient. Like, and then, like, no one else from my team of my crew, like, no one else in my crew can do this. I mean, we watched, we did that part with my dude, my, my person. Speaking about my person, I'm... I, I'm really obsessed with Grey's Anatomy, guys. Like, I haven't watched probably the last three seasons. 
but I, um, I visit this, like, I'm a religious visitor for, the, like, probably the past year now of this website called After Ellen, and, um, it's basically just, uh, uh, like a pop media, sort of, like, it's news, but, like, pop news. Popular news, popular media, I guess you could say. Like, it goes over shows and stuff like that, but it's all about, um... It does it over queer characters, and it just... Um, it's pretty cool. It's very... It's 100% LGBTQ friendly and stuff like that. So if that's something you're into, go visit it. Um, and I don't mean, like, in the in the porn way. If you're If you go there expecting porn, you'll be sorely sorely disappointed. Although, there probably is some type of porn ripoff of the of the thing, so feel free to go find its porn replicate. <laughs> but yeah, I, um, I'm a religious checker of the After Ellen stuff, and they always post like a synopsis of their view of what happened. Like, they give us a synopsis in a fun way. Like, it's not like Cheryl, today in 2 past 1, Cheryl decided that Dave was cheating on her without any real proof. So she got her shotgun and shot his twi fake twin brother in the back of the head. Later on in the episode, Dave found finds his brother, fake bro his brother dead. Then his father, who turns out not to be his father, um, admits to him that his twin fake brother was not really his brother at all. He it was from a separate family, a separate Eskimo family he had when he was a traveling salesman. And now the mystery, now Dave feels betrayed by his, his father and feels closer to Cheryl than ever, while Cheryl lives with the guilt of killing and an innocent man. Like, it's not that. Although, that sounds amazing. That went on way longer than I was expecting it to. But, um, it's like, it, it gives it a really fun twist. Like, I also, I haven't watched Pretty Little Liars since probably season two because I went off to school and, um, I didn't have time to watch it and I didn't own the TV in my dorm room. It was, um, my, always my roommate's. And even if I didn't have time to watch it, I it's during prime time, which is six seven or seven eight um, up in Eastern time, where I was located. So um, I never watched anything. But so but yeah, and that's when I had rehearsal and I ate and I was getting ready for work. Even though it was an hour, it was like still work, and then I usually have like a, a club meeting afterwards, and it was a bunch of stuff during that time. And then I had homework, so it wasn't something I could watch. So I do my Pretty Little Liars updates. Um, like I live vicariously through the words of these women writing these stories. And um, well, it's very lesbian friendly. Let's put it that way. It's very woman friendly. After Lens, a very woman LGBTQ um, friendly space. Like it's friendly to everyone, but it's specifically aimed to the L and the B women out there. Well, not just specifically them, but anyone who identifies as a woman loving person. There, that's a good way of putting it. Woman loving person. Should put that in the law books. It's like, if a person loves a person, then they shall be allowed to be married. That's, that's what's up. That should be in their books. That'll probably be in their books eventually. Oh, and then we'll get into, I have a friend actually. This will be a fun story. I had a friend in, um, in college. She's still my friend. Um, we're still good friends to this day. And um, for her senior, at the school I went to, I don't know what the word is for other places. I guess you would call it sort of like a senior thesis at other schools, but we called it a capstone. 
And basically, um, your last year of school, you had to complete a large project encompassing all the all your majors and minors. Um, something that applied to everything, something that you were interested in, and you had to complete a sort of project. And um, so my friend was majoring in psychology, therefore, I say all they had to do, but they just they had to write a paper based off of it. They had to do a presentation and a paper over it. And it's a, you know it's a pa it's a college thesis paper, so it was like twenty plus pages long of a of a psychology paper. And so my her professor, her advisor, or whatever, um, gave them their topics, and you know it was gonna be a a very hard hitting rhetorical question that they had to write a paper on in a very factually psycho psychological manner. <laughs> And so hers was, I believe, something along the lines of, can you... I... oh my gosh, I don't remember it. It's something about, like, can... Can... Like, can you fall in love... Can robots love, or can you fall in love with a robot, or something like that? And um, it was something like that. And so this is a question that plagued her, her first semester of her senior year, which is when she had to research and write the paper and come up with a, a good argument towards yes or no, and why. And <laughs> um, so that's that's what she did. And so, she would ask us... Uh, well, I hit it, guys. That's... that's checkpoint number one, right, guys? I've literally spent all episode here. But I'm getting better. What I'm doing for, for you guys who are just watching me do this, which is all of you, what I'm doing, basically, is um, coming up with a strategy for each area. So basically here, I run up here, I jump up, I go a little bit to the side on that first screen. Um, you'll see me go, when I'm closer to the top, I'll go a little bit this way. And then I'll hold down left all the way up until I'm almost hitting the spikes. In the next screen, like I'll do this. Up, side, and then I'll just keep holding right. And I just need a... and so that's what I do. And then I just... For that second screen, I should be left and right enough that I can just hold down left and fall that way. And then after that, um, the o my only error that's happening here is that um, it's timing. I'm not timing this in a sufficient way. And if I'll, I'll be completely honest with you, if I wasn't talking and um, doing this for entertainment's sake, I would. Um, absolutely be doing ticks. I'd be hitting my table with my thumb. I'd be like, okay, one, two, three, side, up, side, up. I do it in the rhythm. Because usually that's all you need to do with these things. Uh, with platformers that are based on a, um, on a static, on a static, God, what is it called? A static plane? A static map? Like, if everything... It's... <laughs> I'm gonna sound like a super nerd saying this, if I, as if I didn't already. But, um... It's... Basically, if everything else is constant, you have to look at the variable. So basically, I fall at a... At a constant speed. I never fall faster nor slower. If there are no environmental factors impeding me from going up or down. So I know the facts, right? I can move left or right at a constant speed. Um, I can't go any faster and I cannot go any slower than my max speed. So I can't run any faster than this. There's nothing I can do to run faster than that. I can't um, go down unless I hit a surface and, I can, and vice versa. I can't go up if I don't have a surface. Um, I only fall so fast, I can't make myself fall any faster, up or down. So, I have to look for the other, what, what is the variable in the situation. 
so the variables are my movement. I can go left or right um, at a certain degree. And there's nothing... I mean, environmentally, you could probably... There's something probably telling me, oh, this is when you have to do that. Probably, like, the way the spikes are moved or something like that. Like, you know, you notice how they're stair-stepping? Like, it's probably telling me, this is when you have to do this, and this is when you have to do that. Just little tips like that. And so that's what you have to do with platformers. You can't take it at a... I know a lot of people just like to YOLO it and not look at the scientific side of it, even if you don't know that's what you're doing. Uh, but yeah, that's, that's what I do at least. And if I weren't talking, this would be... I'd probably pass this part already, to be completely honest. I probably would have finished this the first episode. I don't know why I thought I could just fall straight up there. This is gonna be a pain to do backwards. I just, I'm just letting you guys know now. We are now, I think, I'm, I don't have my glasses on. I wear glasses. And, um, I can't see far. Like, at all. I hope you guys are enjoying the names that I can't read because I'm moving way too quickly. And I don't have my glasses. So I have astigmatism, right? And I didn't know I had astigmatism. I knew I had, like, vision problems. I've had vision problems since probably, like, 8th grade. Or probably even earlier than that. Like, I, things were just blurry. Like, I remember- I- Oh, god. So I'm at a point where I can remember, like... Like, my vision started blurring later into my youth, right? So I can still remember when I had 20-20 vision and I could see whatever, because both my parents have terrible vision. Um, because they're both old, I have older parents, and, um... So, they would always tell me, hey, what does this say? What does that say? What does that sign up all the way in the distance say? So I still remember things like that. I have memories of that happening. And I mean, I'm not that old, guys. Ah, so I have to go that way, alright. Cool, 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 cool. I probably should have noticed that on the screen. Yeah, so that's gonna be a, sh a bother. Oh, bother. Is that what Winnie the Pooh used to say? Or um, his friend Eeyore? You know, as an adult, you hear- Oh my god, that was really awkward to say. I called myself an adult. Ugh, that's the word I don't like to hear. <laughs> to call myself. I mean, I am, for all intents and purposes, an adult. I am 21. And, um, and stuff, but that's just, ugh. It's like a dirty word. That, that's, that's the real curse in this world. Like, not, like, fuck shit or any of those words. No, adult. That's a dirty word. That's a curse word. That's something you shouldn't have to, like, it's just, it has so many implications, the word adult. Like, responsibility, just that you're boring, essentially. Like, there's there's almost, like, no positive connotation to adults. Other than... You live on your own, which isn't, like, the greatest thing in the world, you guys. Just letting you know. I mean, there's some amazing aspects of living on your own. There's a lot of shit that sucks about living on your own. Like, I only lived alone... Probably... Uh, a total of a month by myself um, over the span of two years because I I stayed at on campus for holidays so like Thanksgiving and well it was called fall break at my school we didn't have a Thanksgiving break we had a fall break and we only got like three days it was like an extended weekend basically at my school so I had that and then um there's another break I didn't go home for. Can't remember which one. It wasn't spring break, but whatever. Like I, I wouldn't ever go home for the holidays. Only like, Chris, like the winter break and summer break. Those were when I went home. Even um, the spring break, I went home with friends because I couldn't. <laughs> because I didn't want to pay the hundred fifty dollars it would cost me to stay at school for a week. And let me tell you, it is. Spooky. <laughs> Being on your own, especially in a large building like that, like dorm rooms, when you and maybe like 
two other people, like maybe one other person on your floor are there, like it's freaking spooky and for someone like me who's like a, a absolutely terrified of a zombie apocalypse, like that's, those are my thoughts when I'm falling asleep, like if a zombie were to come in here right now, would I be able to, like what would I grab to stop it? Like what could I do to it to prevent it from making contact, biological contact with me? And by biological, I mean us not transferring any fluids or have the least amount of skin contact as possible. And because I don't know how they became that way. I just know that they are that way and I wish not to be that way. It's just like, have you guys heard about the Ebola thing? Um, I hope you have. God, it's been on the news forever. So, I think earlier, early this week or late last week, they closed down an entire, like, I think it was city? Maybe it was, like, an entire country, I'm not even sure, but they closed down an entire, like, metropolis, an entire place. And they were gonna go door by door looking for infected. And, um, I think in this place, in this, where they were gonna do this, where they were gonna shut down, um, they, um, there were protests because it's just so, there's such a negative connotation and, and negative, yeah, just a, uh, just a purely negative connotation with the poor socioeconomic people of the country that doctors are like flim flammers as one would, could probably say that they're only out to like screw you over and um and stuff like that and so I'm, i keep going way too much left there so there's that connotation that that's what they do and so these people are protesting they're like no we're not going to give you our blood you just want to use our blood for X, Y, and Z. X, Y, and Z terrible things. And, um... And yeah. And so that's like absolutely terrible. Honestly, if you know what it makes me want to do, it makes me want to go out and read World War Z. Um, not only is it just a movie with a, a very subpar movie featuring Brad Pitt, but it's, um, it's actually a... It's a, I think it's a trilogy of books. Don't quote me on that, I don't remember. But I know there's more than one. And that the book is way more involved and a lot more politically inclined. And there's like so much that included in, is included in this book. Guys, I really want to do this for you guys, so... So let me take a drink of water, guys. But don't get it this time. I don't know. Because I don't want to, like, not show you guys me getting it. Alright, let's super concentrate. Okay, no. So, yeah, I was telling you guys I have astigmatism. And astigmatism, if you don't know what that means, it means that you have to con you have to focus your eyes on one thing. You know, in pictures, when, um, how when you, in the old school photos, now it's not so apparent. You don't do those things as often as you usually did. But you know how a camera focuses on one subject and makes everything else blurry in the background? Yeah, that's how I see things. <laughs> I focus on one thing and everything in the background is blurry. I, it's always been that way. I had no idea that... <laughs> I had no idea there were things that were different for other people there. And so, okay guys, so this is just going to be a long episode. I'm not going to stop this episode until I get past this. So, you might be in for like an hour long episode. This is a very low file size video. Therefore, I can record this as long as I as needed. But, um, yeah, so... I see... So that's how I see things. So whenever... I'm playing games like this, everything is blurry to me. Like, so I, I don't concentrate my eyes on any particular thing, I just sort of... Um... I sort of just look at everything, 
at it in its blurry nature. I'm used to doing that, right? I'm used to looking at everything in its blurry nature and trying to define what it is. Consciously and subconsciously. To make things easier on myself. So when I get up there, I have to... I have to fall closer to the left than the right. But um, yeah, that's what I do, especially when I'm tired. Like, sometimes I just can't be bothered to concentrate on anything. Like, you know how people can't be bothered to, like, stand up to go do something so they just, like, roll over there or something? That's- that's how I am with vision sometimes. Like, I just can't be bothered. It's like that with vision and focus for me. If I'm tired, like... I- I can make myself... I can allow myself not to concentrate. Cause my- I don't know if this is what it's like for other people. Because I've never been diagnosed with ADD or ADHD in any, like, official doctor's life. I'm sure if I went to go get checked out, it would probably be like, yeah, you do. You got this. And you got all of this, all these other things to boot. And, um, like, I'm sure if I went to a doctor, they'd tell me I was fucked up in all kinds of ways. But, um, I, ever since I can remember, I've always had to, like, force myself to pay attention to things. I, like, I have the choice to listen or not to listen to something, because something else will always grab my attention. So, like, I can just move my fingers and go through the motions and look at something else completely and forget I'm doing this. And so I have to, like, force myself to pay attention to what I'm doing. And it's just second nature now. Like, it's... It's not even forcing myself at this point, it's just like an on-off switch. It's like, pay attention, not pay attention, pay attention, not pay attention. The only way I know that I'm forcing myself to do it is because I have to exert a lot of, lot of energy to do it. Like, it's never been a problem because I've trained myself, you know? I've trained myself to pay attention. And I, like, I never noticed it until college because it was pointed out to me because I always move my feet or like some part of my body, I have a really hard time just sitting still. Even even when I'm like paying attention to something, I guess that's how I get out my focus. Like that's how I force myself to focus. I concentrate all my energy to another section of my body. And um... That's, yeah, so... I was pointed out to me by friends at college that I move a lot. Always. And it was, it's mostly because it annoyed them, because they were persnickety bitches. But you know, whatever. No hard feelings anymore. You know what? It's really terrible of me, actually. Because I have... I went to school with this person, and she was the only other music education major in, um... At my school that was in my grade. So I had to... In my class. So I was basically forced to interact with her always. Because we were, we were all in the, all in the same classes, we had basically the exact same schedule except one. And if there's anything to know about me, is that I really hate a uh, schedule. I rate, I really hate anything that I can't change. Like I don't have a problem with a self-made schedule as long as I have the freedom to change it if I want to. But since I like with school. I have sort of an issue with it, um, nearing the end of school, just because I get really frustrated. But, um, usually that's fine. That type of schedule is fine with me, because at least it's something interesting. But, like, having to see the same person over and over again and listen to their same shit over and over again. So, I was not terribly fond of this person to begin with. She was not the type of person I would ever interact with by my own free will. She's a... I like I would give she she would look nice enough. I would speak to her and then I would listen to her speak and I'd be like, well, and that's the end of our possible friendship right there. Just because she's I I describe her sort of like my mom. Um, just because you know there's annoying things about everyone's parents that you hate. Like there's traits about them that you dislike a lot. Or well, at least I do. There's some traits I really dislike and it's just because I've been trained to. Um, thanks to my teenage hormonal years. So, basically she would just, like, have to say everything. Like, she would have to explain everything. 
Like, I'd be like, okay, I get it. And she'd still go on and tell me it. And it, that drives me insane. Like, if I tell you I got it, I got it. Like, I don't need further explanation. If I need further explanation, I assure you I will let you know. And if not, I will m make someone else tell me because I probably won't speak to you again. But, um... Yeah. So she wouldn't do that, and she was just always so unbelievably negative. Like, she's the type of person you need to not have in your life. She was never negative towards me, but she was just negative towards life in general. Like, her energy was just dark. I'm not even a person who believes in- well, not believes- not believes in isn't the right thing, but I'm not someone who, like, um, actively thinks about that type of stuff, but her just, like, aura and her just, like, entire person was just so dark. And she was, like, a normal person. She wasn't, like, what you would describe to be as, like, someone who would be extremely negative all the time. She was a normal person. She was fairly wealthy, comes from a happy family. Sort of. Um, I mean, we all have shit that goes on in our houses. Um, and, she, like, I don't know, she was just... Oh, it just was annoying. Like, nothing could ever be good. And she was, like, a snob and, like, a teacher's pet. And she sort of thought she was better than everyone. I don't know. There was just a lot of traits about her I really disliked. So, um, I think I disliked her even more just because of the nature of how we had to interact, which was basically forced and, like, reinforced afterwards. Um, because she, I don't know, she, she might have, like, Asperger's or something, like, um, like, she just has a lot of, like, does not know how to interact with people, and it's, and that's really tiring, because I'm a very social person, like, I like speaking to people and hanging out with people and meeting new people, whether I like them or not, I like to at least get to know that I don't like them. And she is just the opposite of that. She just kills the conversation dead before it, it, it even starts, to be honest. And so... That's who she was. And... So I was... I was forced to interact with her, and she... Ugh. And then, because of her whole social ineptitude... Um... I, people would always be like, you need to get her to hang out with more people, and I'm like, why is that my responsibility? It's not my responsibility to get someone else to do something. It neither makes me a good nor bad person to not involve myself with someone I don't enjoy. But I can't exactly say that, right? Because she was like the favored one of, I, from both of us, because I um, have no desire to be number one anymore. I have a desire, well... I have a desire to beat other people. Like, I don't want to be number one, but if someone else is, I don't like is going to be number one, I'll assure you I will do everything I, in my power to make sure I am number one, and they are not. Like, I'm one of those people. Like, I don't actively do it, but if I really hate someone and I don't think they deserve the position they're in, I'll make sure I replace, I replace them. Um, like, I don't get any... I, it's just from absolute years and years of, like, uh, my entire, like, elementary career, I had straight A's, I never, I literally never missed one day of school, um, I even, like, have, like, an ear thing, I had, like, an ear infection or something, and I had, like, pus draining out of my ear, I think, like, my eardrum ruptured or something like that, I, I was sick and stuff happened, I don't really remember, it was, like, first, second grade, and I went to school with a cotton ball in my ear to pick up all the drainage because I refused to miss school. Um, there, I think I even, um, I, and I've never had chicken pox, so. But, yeah, so, and, like, I got little, and because I was in, like, gifted and talented classes, I got, like, little to no praise by, um, my t teachers and stuff. Like, I was even, like, the perfect, like, I, w I was a teacher's pet. 
it's like I was all these things and I got little to no praise and then I had cousins down in the valley who um who like they could fart and get a fucking trophy and I think it's just like simmering anger and stuff like that that I just I don't get any gratification from being the best at anything there's I don't have that at all I need to push space to, um, I'm not pushing space, I'm pushing the up and down buttons. And when I, when I flip, I need to do that because my fingers aren't moving fast enough. Let me take another drink of water. Man, guys, we're in this for the long haul. We are 40 minutes in. But, what was the point of that story? Are there, other than telling you that. So yeah, I don't get any instant, instant gratification. I get instant gratification from other people's reactions. That I'm really fascinated by other people and how they react and the human emotion and all that. Damn it. All of that because, um, I don't know, humans are way more fascinating. Like, school is boring and predictable. And especially, but I'm a really fast learner. Like, you could say something and if I'm paying attention to it, I'll remember it for the allotted time necessary to get a good grade in your class. But if I don't, if I don't put that on switch on my focus, like, I, like, there are some, just some classes in college I was just like, I don't, I don't need to, like, excel in this. I just need to know the basics and I'll have, like, a guide later in like four years when I won't remember any of this even if I do put all my um, put all my energy into this one class because I had guys I had like 10 classes I had to go to like five classes a day it was not a good time like my friends had like four classes a day given it, they were like maybe two hour classes with a lab but like that's a lot less exhausting than going to like five different classes and doing five different class worths of of work and then I made the poor choice um like it's if you haven't gone to college guys the thing about college and you are about to go to college or you, and, and um, you're nervous about it college is really really easy it's a formula and it's probably like this in every single college all you have to do is um every class is gonna think it's the most important thing in the world however there are different all your classes are valued differently, despite what your professors might think. Um, so, your classes are going to be rated by like zero to probably like four credits is probably the most you can get. Um, the regular is probably three. So you're, th and so if you have a zero credit class, all you have to do is pass that class. That's those are usually your pass fail classes. Sometimes you get a grade in those, but it doesn't weigh at all in your um. It has little to no weight on your GPA. Therefore, those are usually your pass-fail classes, if they're and they're required, which is why they're pass or pass or fail because you have to pass them. They're usually your super easy classes. Like for music education, it was just um, I don't even remember what what bullshit class they called it, but basically we just sat around and we talked about music professions and we had guest speakers come to us say things. So those are like your zero classes, the ones that don't really mean anything and they have little to no real content that could be measured by a test or quiz. Um, so those are your zero credit classes. Those are pass or fail. Those are only required by your major. So your GPA will not be affected at all by that. Um, it probably will, it might be affected negatively but I'm not too sure. Your one credit classes, those are gonna be the ones with the grade, with the numerical or or alphabetical grade. And those have an impact on your grade. If you get a, a good or bad grade, those are gonna have an impact. I don't remember the formula exactly because I didn't bother to do this. I did it a lot in high school, figuring out my GPA and stuff. But so that has only a one point weight on your GPA. And so there's two credit classes too, but let's jump to three credit classes. Those are going to have a lot of weight on them, and those are most likely going to be your more massive of 
your classes, like usually your um, your third and fourth year classes are going to be three credit classes, or like the super important classes, like probably calculus, college calculus, and um, like a bunch of those classes that are really far into your major, whatever you're getting a degree in. And so those are the classes you should put most of your energy in because those classes count three times as much as your one credit classes. So you should prioritize doing all the work for that class and getting the A in that class. And um, you should prioritize getting like an A in all your classes if you want like a good GPA or whatever because that matters in the in the real world. Um, it's I say it sarcastically, but it matters somewhat. I mean, all you honestly need is a degree, but all, what you really need um, are good recommendations from whoever you volunteer with and whoever your professors are, if they're um, prominent in the career field of your choosing. So, yeah, always pay attention and get better grades in your three credit classes, your two and three credit classes and four if those even exist. Um, your one credit classes should be the last thing you do, although you should still do work because they still count, but they count so much less that if you get a hundred, it'll only impact your GPA very little, especially if you have a lot of your credit classes. So, um, so yeah, that's the formula to college. It's not like high school where every class matters basically the same, unless you take regular, a mixture of AP, pre-AP, and AP classes, and regular classes, or normal classes, um, it's, it's sort of like that formula. If you don't know what that is, don't worry about it. So that's all college is. It's all just a game of numbers, and it's, I find that really annoying. Like, I learn things really quickly, I'm very, I'm a kinetic learner, therefore I, um, I learn a lot. I learn things that require movement. So I learned how to play most of the instruments, minus percussion instruments, like immediately. I caught on very quickly. And although I don't remember a lot of the tech, not the technique, a lot of the um, the fingering, like finger placement and stuff like that, off the top of my head. Um, I if I look them up, I'll learn them, and it'll come back in my memory. They're back there, they're just not, like, prominent information. So, I... And so, those classes, the classes that required hands-on stuff, those are my one credit classes. And I put a bit more attention on those classes than I did my three credit classes, because those were the more boring and less important in my... in my views. Um... Some of them were, like, absolutely useless. I had a... My music, I believe my music 101 class was a three credit class, and all we did in that class was read a stupid book that told me absolutely nothing about a profession I was going to go into.